And again, Christians get out and vote just this time. You won't have to do it anymore. Four more years, you know what? It'll be fixed, it'll be fine. You won't have to vote anymore, my beautiful Christians. I love you, Christians. I'm a Christian. I love you. Get out. You got to get out and vote. In four years, you don't have to vote again. We'll have it fixed so good, you're not going to have to vote. You just heard Donald Trump ominously tell his Christian supporters that they won't ever have to vote again if he wins because everything will be fixed. Mm, very interesting comment there. Now, I'd be remiss to not also point out his Freudian slip about him not being a Christian. I mean, listen. I'm a Christian. He's saying he's not a Christian, but nobody's talking about that because of the other thing that he said, understandably so. But to be fair, there is a couple of different ways that you can interpret his comments there. First and foremost, you can assume that he's saying his four years in office, if he's elected, will be so successful that subsequent elections will be inconsequential to the point where voting won't matter because of all the amazing things that he's going to do. Or you can interpret it to mean that you won't have to vote again because he doesn't plan on leaving office. So you just have to vote for him this one more time and then elections will be over. He'll turn us into a dictatorship or a monarchy and remain in power until he dies and one of his kids takes over. See, the problem is that nobody really knows for sure what he means because Trump's ramblings are often incoherent. But instinctively, I'm going to assume the worst because of who we're talking about here. This is the same guy who said he'd be a dictator for a day and also said we should terminate the Constitution. He also lied about the last election being stolen. He then tried to overturn said election and ultimately incited an insurrection. So he has no plausible deniability. You can't discuss these comments in a vacuum. You have to look at the broader context to understand what he might mean. But unfortunately, some mainstream media outlets they're not really putting his comments in proper context, and they're just kind of brushing it aside, case in point. Governor, what the heck did he mean there? <laughs> well, I think I think that was a classic Trumpism, if you will. Uh, I think he's just trying to make the point that this stuff can be fixed. Uh, you know, obviously, it's uh, we want everybody to vote in all elections, but I think he was just trying to make a, 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 a hyperbolic point that uh, that it can be fixed as long as he gets back into office and all that. But, you know, classic Trump right there. OK, and and just days. Let's let's turn to President Biden and Kamala Harris. I think Donald Trump is well known for playing to his audience. He sort of is willing to forget the fact that the world is also watching his words. He was speaking to Christians. It certainly sounds like a president that is a presidential candidate that's that is um, determined to shut down the democratic process. But it could mean, you know, he speaks in code. It could mean I'm going to solve all the problems and, and shut down debate on the issues that you care about. And therefore, voting will be less consequential. We all know that the contrast um, between these two candidates, Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, is vast on domestic issues, on a number of foreign policy issues. And so the stakes are high, the contrast is high, and both candidates are going to be really using this message to drive passion and enthusiasm amongst their voters. Donald Trump is willing to even use language that suggests that he's willing to subvert the democratic process and put an end to it. But, you know, maybe he's saying something different. Maybe he was speaking to older voters. Um, it, it, it is obviously very disturbing in light of the events of January 6th, his role in that. Um, but again, he's speaking to his base. These are not voters that are going to switch who they're voting for because they're afraid of any risk to democracy. It's just about enthusing them. So to her credit, the last lady did bring up January 6th briefly. But I mean, if energizing his base requires him to promise ending democracy, isn't that something that we shouldn't just kind of gloss over? Like, I feel like it requires us to grapple with the implications of that a little bit longer. No. Also, when uh, Chris Sununu claimed that it was classic Trump, Martha Raddatz was just like, OK, and then she moved on to uh, Biden and Kamala. That's it. You just you're just going to accept that. I mean, that right there is media malpractice. And I get that everybody has Trump fatigue. It's 2024. We've been dealing with this asshole for a very long time. But we can't just be desensitized to the dumb shit that he says, even if it's difficult to not just shrug whenever he talks. But I mean, what he said there was incredibly dangerous and it's irresponsible 
to just ignore it as classic Trump. But thankfully, Harris's team seems to actually understand what's at stake here. And they put out a really good statement responding to that comment, writing, quote, when Vice President Harris says this election is about freedom, she means it. Our democracy is under assault by criminal Donald Trump. After the last election Trump lost, he sent a mob to overturn the results. This campaign, he has promised violence if he loses, the end of our elections if he wins, and the termination of the Constitution to empower him to be a dictator to enact his dangerous project 2025 agenda on America. So that was a great statement. And I'm glad that she mentioned the elephant in the room, Project 2025, because Trump already has a plan to effectively turn America into a dictatorship. It's Project 2025. And this is how Heritage Foundation President Kevin Roberts describes Project 2025. We are in the process of the second American revolution, which will remain bloodless if the left allows it to be. That's the president of the organization spearheading Project 2025. It'll remain bloodless so long as the left allows it to. In other words, comply with us turning America into a dictatorship and nobody gets hurt. Hmm. Very encouraging. Now, after that clip went viral, Donald Trump tried to distance himself from Project 2025, writing on Truth Social, quote, I know nothing about Project 2025. I have no idea who is behind it. I disagree with some of the things they're saying, and some of the things they're saying are absolutely ridiculous and abysmal. Anything they do, I wish them luck, but I have nothing to do with them. Sure. Notice the contradiction there. I know nothing about Project 2025, but also some of the things, you know, in there I disagree with. Well, do you know nothing about it? Or do you know about it and disagree with some of the things they're saying? Now, that's not the only time that he's feigned ignorance about Project 2025, because he also denounced it as extreme stream at a rally he's involved in project and then they read some of the things and they are extreme i mean they're seriously extreme but i don't know anything about it i don't want to know anything about it but that's a lie everybody knows it's a lie including president of the heritage foundation kevin roberts and i say this because this is how he responded when he was asked about trump distancing himself from project 2025 well, I, I think it's the, the sign of a great leader who understands he's in a, a terrific political news cycle. He's run a really good campaign from start up to this point. And the, the left's mis, mischaracterization of Project 2025 had become a liability. I think we, we've seen that really turn around in the last few days since that statement. So no hard feelings from any of us at Project 2025 about the statement, because we understand Trump is the standard bearer and he's making a political tactical decision. In other words, no hard feelings, because we know that he has to lie about this to get elected because people don't like Project 2025. Polls are very unkind to the policies in Project 2025. Nobody wants to live in a dictatorship. Nobody wants to privatize Medicare. Nobody wants to see LGBTQ plus people designated as porn so they can be jailed for indecent exposure. Nobody wants this. So he knows Trump has to lie to get elected. And then once he's elected, all bets are off. Now, to be clear, you know, that wasn't some super secret audio that we all weren't supposed to hear from Kevin Roberts because he basically said the same thing on Fox News. And if you're running for president and you're trying to win not just any campaign, but what we think at Heritage is the most significant campaign in modern American history, then it makes sense that politically you want to pivot from that. There are no hard feelings from us at Project 2025 or Heritage about that. We love President Trump. Roberts might be a Christo fascist, but I mean, you've got to give him credit for at least being honest. You know, the Heritage Foundation, they published all 900 pages of Project 2025 for all of us to read. And they did that not to scare us, but to galvanize people, other Christian nationalists who feel like a Trump dictatorship is the last way that they can save America. So Trump specifically telling Christians this will be the last time that they have to vote. That tracks if you consider Project 2025. But the Heritage Foundation doesn't doubt Trump will carry out Project 2025 even if he's currently trying to distance himself from it because he already carried out Project 2017. Now, that's not what it's called, but when Trump was in office the first time, the Heritage Foundation had what they called the Mandate for Leadership, which included dozens of policy recommendations for the future Republican administration, and that happened to be Donald Trump. Now, on their website, they boast about Trump completing 64% of the policy recommendations in their Mandate for Leadership. And they even shared a tweet where Donald Trump boasts about how he completed 64% of their mandate for leadership, i.e. Project 2017, which he himself referred to as the Trump agenda. So their mandate for leadership was the Trump agenda. That's how he viewed it. That's how they both viewed it. So why are we supposed to believe that Project 2025 won't also be the Trump agenda? 
And again, before he distanced himself from the Heritage Foundation, he was singing a very different tune. The critical job of institutions such as Heritage is to lay the groundwork, and Heritage does such an incredible job at that. And I'm telling you, with, uh, with Kevin and the staff, and I met so many of them now, I took pictures with among the most handsome, beautiful people I've ever seen. I didn't like that picture. If you could lose that picture, please, would you, Kevin? But this is a great, no, he says I won't do that. But this is a great group, and they're going to lay the groundwork and detail plans for exactly what our movement will do and what your movement will do when the American people give us a colossal mandate to save America. And that's coming. That's coming. Oops. So it turns out you can't put the cat back in the bag. So unsurprisingly, Trump is lying again. And whatever doubt there was before about whether or not Trump was fully on board with Project 2025, that all ended when he chose J.D. Vance as his running mate, who full-throatedly endorsed the core principle behind 2025 without actually naming it. I think that the thing that we have to take away from the last 10 years is that we really need to be really ruthless when it comes to the exercise of power. The challenge confronting American conservatives is that we have lost every major powerful institution in the country, except for maybe churches and religious institutions, which, of course, are weaker now than they've ever been. Uh, we have lost big business. We've lost finance. We've lost the culture. We've lost the academy. And if, if we're going to actually really affect real change in the country, it will require us completely replace, replacing the existing ruling class with another ruling class. I say that knowing and hearing myself, it sounds really hard. It is really hard, but I don't think there's like a detent with these people. I don't think there's sort of a compromise that we're gonna come with the people who currently actually control the country. Unless we overthrow them in some way, we're gonna keep losing. Now, when he talks about the people running the country, he's referring to unelected bureaucrats. And step number one of Project 2025 is for Trump to sign Schedule F as an executive order, which turns bureaucrats into political appointments, which then gives him the authority to fire all of them. The goal is to seize control of the executive branch by stripping all agencies of their administrative autonomy. And once the president does that, he then implements the policies that he wants unilaterally without agencies in the executive checking his power, as was the case when Trump was president the first time. Now, you can argue that Congress can still act as a check on his authority, but he's already captured the judiciary. I mean, the Supreme Court just said a couple of weeks ago that presidents have absolute immunity. So he can be basically a tyrant who's above the law and there's nothing anyone can really do about that. So Trump picked a VP who's fully on board with this power grab that's laid out in Project 2025. But if you're still not convinced, there's this. This is a book coming out by Kevin Roberts, who again is the president of the Heritage Foundation, who said that their second American revolution will be bloodless if the left allows it to be. Now, take a look at who wrote the forward at the top. That right there is Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance. Now, as HuffPost reports, quote, Robert's book appears to have initially been called Dawn's Early Light, burning down Washington to save America, according to a page for the book on HarperCollins website. But the name is different on the book's bookshop and Amazon pages, changed to the slightly less inflammatory Dawn's Early Light, taking back Washington to save America. Now, on top of that, if you go to the Amazon page, J.D. Vance also wrote a blurb for Robert's book where he praises him for articulating a genuinely new future for conservatism. And if you read Project 2025, you know exactly what that future is. Kevin Roberts wrote the foreword for Project 2025. He is the president of the organization spearheading Project 2025. So when you zoom out, it becomes very clear what Trump means when he says Christians won't have to vote anymore if he's elected again. We'd be naive to interpret that any other way. The man wants to be a fucking dictator and Project 2025 sets the stage for that very thing to happen. Now ask yourself this. Let's say Trump is elected again and he says, you know what? I want to abolish the 22nd Amendment so I can stay in office longer. Do you actually think that Republicans would reject that? Of course not. They'd go along with him. Any Republican who wants to run in 2028 when he would be term limited out, they're going to be quiet because they know if you go out, if you go against Donald Trump, you know, the base is going to turn on you. So they would just say, yeah, I, I support President Trump and I'll go along with it. They're all going to fall in line, you know, and if they didn't fall in line, even if they actually chose to grow spines, the problem is that, you know, there wouldn't 
be much checks on him. He already said he wants to terminate the Constitution, and the Supreme Court said he has absolute immunity. So he could do a lot of crazy shit to facilitate that goal, right? Now, I'm not saying that this is all a certainty, but it's a possibility. And when a wannabe dictator says we don't have to vote again if he's elected, I don't think we should just dismiss that as classic Trump. You know, he's always saying dumb, incoherent shit. I get that everybody has Trump fatigue. I understand that. But we should take what he said as a threat because it is. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.